This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We are glad that you are joining us this second Sunday in Advent to worship our risen Lord, who is worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, our God is worthy of all praise and glory. As we enter into worship with open hearts and open minds, let us sing this opening hymn, Heart the Herald Angel Sing. Christmas, men won't be boys, playing with balls like kids play with toys. One warm December, our hearts will see a world where men are free. Someday at Christmas, there'll be no wars when we have learned what Christmas is for when we have found what life's really worth there'll be peace on earth someday all our dreams will come to be someday in a world where people are free maybe not in time for you and me but someday at Christmas time, someday at Christmas we'll see a land with no hungry children and no empty hand. One happy morning, people will share our world where people care. Someday at Christmas there'll be no tears when all men are equal and no man has fears one shining moment one prayer away from our world today someday all our dreams will come to be someday in a world where people are free maybe not in time Someday at Christmas time Someday in a world where men are free Maybe not in time for you and me When we have found what life's really worth There'll be peace on earth God be the glory, great things God has done. But there will be peace on earth someday. Join us now as we pray, invoking God's presence to continue to be with us in our worship service. 
Eternal God, we thank you for being the God of peace, the God that gives us an understanding in times of trouble. And God, we thank you for the love that's been shared so far in this worship service. Love through prayer and through song, love through concerns. Most importantly, God, love by your Holy Spirit. And we thank you on this second Sunday of Advent that you call us to a place of peace. And we pray now that the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts will continue to be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. For God, we recognize that somebody is not in a place of peace this morning. So we pray that your Holy Spirit would move. God, we recognize that somebody may be in the midst of a storm. And the storm when the winds are blowing and the waves are tossing and the thunder is rolling and the lightning is striking. God, we pray that even in the midst of that storm, you will provide peace. Speak now that your servants may hear move in a mighty way that in this Christmas, Advent, Yuletide season, we will experience the peace from Almighty God. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, we pray. Amen. To God be the glory for the spirit of worship in this space. Thank you so much for joining us, being a part of the C.N. Jenkins Memorial Presbyterian Church, to Dr. Monroe and the music staff, to our AV team, to those who are providing security at the church, our COVID assistance team, particularly Dr. Uh, Carol and Pastor Lanson, who are in charge of a significant portion of our community. We are grateful again, uh, Pastor Lanson, for leading in worship today on this communion Sunday. We are glad that you are joining us. We will be observing the sacrament of communion. So if you are at your home, your place where you're residing right now, be sure to pull those elements together. And at the conclusion of the preaching portion of this sermon, we will celebrate that sacrament. Today, by the spirit of Almighty God, I invite you to turn in your Bibles to the Old Testament book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 26. I'm only going to read to you verse 3, but if you can, in your quiet time and your meditative time, study the entire chapter of Isaiah 26. I believe it would indeed be a deposit into your spirit where your soul will grow. But I want to lift up to you verse 3 of this text, for it simply says, You will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And again, on this second Sunday of Advent, I invite you to just focus in on that one verse of Isaiah 26, for it says, you will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. And with the aid of the Holy Spirit and your encouragement today, I invite you, my friends, to join with us as we preach and teach on our subject, the power of peace. The power of peace. <clears throat> what do the names Martin Luther King Jr., Harry Kissinger, Menachem Begum, Mother Teresa, Desmond Tutu, Mikhail Gorbachev, Nelson Mandela, Yasser Arafat, Kofi Annan, Jimmy Carter, Al Gore, or Barack Obama mean to you? What do those names connect in any way as you just hear those names called? Well, let me see if I can share with you a story that may help you connect the dots of the individuals to which I have already lifted up. For I need you to go with me to 1867, for there was a Swedish chemist by the name of Alfred Nobel who invented a new highly explosive uh, element called dynamite. He was convinced that his invention, my friends, would make all wars too horrible to ever happen again. However, he quickly discovered that there was no shortage of buyers for his new explosive. He made a huge fortune on his sales, yet he was horrified with the suffering and the misery it caused in wars and conflicts. But what was he to do? And it was toward the end of his life in the 19th century, he awoke up and he read his own obituary in the local newspaper. Alfred Noble, it said, the inventor of dynamite, who died yesterday devised a way uh, for more people to be killed in war than ever before. He died a very rich man. 
Now, actually, it was Alpha's brother's epithet that he was reading, for the newspaper reporter had confused the epithet of his brother with Alpha Noble. But, but it was at that moment, y'all, that, that Alfred had an epiphany, an awakening moment, shall we say, because he decided at that moment to be known for something other than developing means to kill people efficiently and for amusing, amassing a fortune in the process. Alpha Noble, y'all, as a result of this awakening, initiated the Nobel Prize, an award given to scientists and writers who foster peace. Alfred Noble, the inventor of dynamite, y'all, took something that was destructive and began to make something positive out of it. And if you're wondering again who those names were that I called, those were all recipients of the Alpha Nobel Peace Prize. And you know, that's exactly what the gospel of the God, uh, our Savior, is giving us today. The gospel of God's grace does for everybody. That is, Alpha Nobel was known to say is that I want to have every man a chance to correct this epithet in midstream. In essence, since the gospel of grace, my friends, allows us to live a life in such a way that some point you can say time out. At some point you can say break. At some point you can stop and rewrite your epitaph. And there is somebody who can give God praise this second Sunday in Advent to thank God for stopping you someplace in your life before you went too far. Somebody right now can thank God for being God in your life and stopping you, putting on the brake, shall we say, before you took your last breath. This season of Advent, y'all, is a season that causes us to stop and reflect. It causes us to think. It causes us to review and to evaluate just where we are on our journey with Almighty God. The season of Advent comes upon us year after year. And most importantly, as we sing hymns of praise and we pray prayers of expectation, drawing the light from God's heavenly throne to our dark sin world, we understand that Advent causes us to live in a spirit of peace. The light of Christ is shown upon all the world to help us understand what does it mean to be a child of God. From hope to peace to joy to love, this is our season of preparation. And as you go with me to the Old Testament book, the prophet of Isaiah, I want you to hear what he says, for he records the, God, the word of God that you will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. The prophet gives us a promise from Almighty God that you and I will be kept in perfect peace as we keep our thoughts and our minds on our creation. God, through God's promises, y'all, and through God's Son, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, gives us perfect peace. Can you just type perfect peace right there in the chat box? Because somebody this morning woke up with something on your mind and you need some peace. Somebody got a phone call last week that, upsturbed, uh, that, that disturbed your apricot and you now need some peace. Somebody looking at me and listening right now has in your spirit something that is pulling and something that is towing and I want to give you a word of perfect peace but understand perfect peace is only given to the person whose mind is fixed on the Lord. Let me just give it to you from the Hebrew minister Donna. The word peace from Hebrew shalom and it means to be in harmony with God. Experiencing the peace with God and the peace of God. It means to be in such harmony with God that one is assured of having all their needs met. Peace y'all is the assurance of health, 
wholeness in the absence of conflict. Peace, y'all, is the insurance of deliverance through hardship, accident, disease, and distress. Peace given by God, my friends, is a quiet, restful place with a sense of purpose and contentment. The peace of Almighty God that God promises through the Holy Word and God promises through the prophets is the assurance, so as we say in the church world, the blessed assurance that Jesus will work it out. Somebody can give an amen right there because you only have experienced the peace that God can give you as God has worked it out in your relationship with the Lord. This is what I'm calling the power of of peace, the power of peace that helps you stand, the power of peace that helps you maintain, the power of peace that helps you fight and deal with the temptations of life. However, now note the important fact that the person who has such peace is the person whose mind and thoughts have been fixed on the Lord. See, through turmoil, Isaiah's day, the prophet Isaiah is clearly experiencing, y'all, a promise from Almighty God to let my people who are called by my name to humble themselves and to pray to turn from their wicked ways and accept God's peace. Advent is just that, y'all, an invitation for us to turn from wickedness and turn from evil and turn from, from, from discontentment to a place of peace. Peace I lead with you, the gospel says. The peace I give unto you. The world didn't give it and the world cannot take it away. Jesus says the peace I give to you. I've spoken of it and he says in the world you should have tribulations but be of good cheer I have overcome the world. The Romans epistle says it this way it says therefore being justified by faith we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ and y'all know I've got to give the quotation for Philippians for it says be anxious of nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with faith Thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to Almighty God. And come on, help me preach right there. And the peace that passes all understanding shall be right. Come on, you can you say amen right there? Because if you've been through something, you need some peace to help you pass through. If you are coming up the rough side of the mountain, you know you got to have some peace to keep on pushing you through. And you see, having an attitude of peace, y'all, it is a con it is a it is a priceless commodity. It's almost like that MasterCard commercial. It's just priceless. I don't care what you have to go through to get it. It is priceless. I don't care how long you have to stay up to receive it. It's priceless. Somebody can say, Reverend, it's priceless to have some peace, not to fuss and cuss as much as I used to. It's priceless to have some peace, not to get angry like I used to. It's priceless to have some peace, not to throw or go off the handle and start calling folk names like I used to. If you know what it's like to have peace, type peace right there in the chat box. If you know what it's like to have peace, smile at the person who used to get on your last nerve right now and tell them, I got some peace. You see, it's all starting with the attitude, the attitude of peace. It's an attitude that says, I'm trusting God. And it speaks so powerfully, my friends, to peace. Let me just give you what I found, seven quick ways to practice peace. And I picked these up from the TV evangelist, Joyce Meyer. She says there are seven ways to practice peace. Number one, be selective how you spend your time. Don't let people take your peace because they are taking your time. You, you, you may be trying to do too many things, and God only wants you to do one thing. Be, be led by the Spirit. Number two, in practicing your peace, she says, be prepared to say no nicely. Too many of us are, are yes men and yes women saying yes all the time. Sometimes to have peace, all you got to do is practice saying no. Can you type no right there? Can you shout no right there? Can you? Now, nicely, don't scream it, don't yell, don't cuss nobody out. Just say no, 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 no. 
Number three, she says, to, to practice peace, you have to resist the spirit of procrastination. It's an attitude of saying, I, I'm going to get around to it when I get around to it. And don't you know that is contrary to the word of Almighty God? For the word says we've got to exercise self-discipline. And, and the word says that we cannot put off today what we, what tomorrow what we ought to be doing today. You have to practice and get away from procrastination. Number four, you have to eliminate key distractions. Key distractions, you know what they are. Stuff to keep you up all night long, then you can't wake up in the morning to go to work on time. Key distractions. Playing games and watching things and, and being a part of somebody else is like key distractions. Not being focused on what you ought to be focused on. If you want some peace, you got to eliminate some key distractions. Number five, you got to set up what she calls appropriate boundary interruptions. Y'all, life is full of interruptions, but we have to set up the appropriate boundaries. You have to have some guardrails like they have on the highway. You have to have, okay, you have to have that, that little bit of, of, of um, of asphalt that on the edge of the road that when you get too close, your tires start to rub and brrr, and that way it, it warns you, you're getting too close to the edge. Don't push me cause I'm close to the edge. I'm trying not to lose my, come on. <laughs> you get to set up some boundaries and those boundaries will stop you. Those boundaries will keep you. Those boundaries will give you some peace. You, you have to, number six, modify your life. Mod ask God to show you some out-of-the-box kinds of things. Quit trying to do everything to impress folk that don't even like you. Some out-of-the-box kinds of things. You, you have to, if, if you don't cook, quit trying to have folk over your house for a meal. You better call DoorDash. You better call some takeout. You better call Domino's Pizza. Let somebody, if you can't bake a birthday meal, don't worry about the birthday meal. Buy them a cake and some ice cream. That's all they want anyway. If you don't have a clean house, quit using plates. Use some paper plates. Use, use your head. And number seven, you got to listen to the Holy Spirit. Listen, listen to the Holy Spirit. Because when you want peace, you got to follow the will of Almighty God. Pray for peace and the wisdom that makes changes. And I'm talking about the power of peace, y'all. And, and peace, y'all, it comes from a result of our love of Almighty God. And, and it's really on the foundation of love. The foundation of joy and peace are built on love. It's important for us to understand that peace does not come through the the absence of trouble. For you see, simply stated, peace is a commitment to understand, celebrating, and learning from the differences of others. It is a commitment not to harm those around us, but to nurture those that we encounter. Peace, in the words of former President John Fitzgerald Kennedy, he says that peace is a daily, a weekly, and a monthly process, gradually changing opinions, slowly eroding old barriers and quietly building new structures. It was peace from the words of former First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt who once said, it isn't enough to talk about peace, one must believe in peace, and it isn't enough to believe in it, one must work at it. Is this not the same First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt who understood the invitation from Howard University president who wanted to have a Marian Anderson the scene at Constitution Hall, but the daughters of the American Revolution in 1930s had a Jim Crow law that black folk could not perform on the stage of Constitutional Hall. Yes, we could clean it, we could mop it, we could dust it, but we couldn't stand on the stage, so they 
did not let Mary and Anderson, my friends, sing at Constitutional Hall. So Eleanor Roosevelt invited this African American to sing at the White House in front of the king and the queen of England. If that's not enough, y'all, is not the same Eleanor Roosevelt who allowed not just her voice, but the voice of others to put Mary and Anderson on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial and 75,000 folk. Now understand you can only seat 4,000 in Constitutional Hall, but 75,000 listen to her on the Lincoln. Okay, you can only seat 4,000 in a building that man made, but in the space that God made, 75,000. Can you give God a praise right there? Because man wants to do things for evil, but God has a way of setting it up for good. You've got to recognize when man says no, God says not yet. It's on the way. When man says you can't do it, God says I'm getting you ready for something greater. You see, don't let what other folks say to you stop you from being all that God has for you. It's not what they call you, it's what you answer to. The good news, my friends, is you got to recognize that peace coming from the words of the yoga and the meditation great John J. Don Walters, he says you will find peace not by trying to escape your problems but by confronting them courageously. You will find peace not in denial but in the victory. You see what I'm saying? Peace, my church family, is really dependent on our relationship with God. And the word for peace in the biblical Greek, uh, uh, Pastor Lenson and Dr. Carroll, it means it is irene, irene, irene. It, it means to be at peace, to reconcile and to make peace. Peace. It, it, it describes itself in a harmonious kind of way. It, it is when you are in peace, you are in harmony. Okay, let me see if I can help you understand this. When you are in peace, you are in harmony. And I've asked Dr. Monroe to help me understand what harmony is. Sometimes you can just have the baseline of your life, and that's all you have is the baseline. It's a baseline. You don't know what it is, what it does. But then when you connect with God, you can also have some tenor and maybe some alto. And the tenor and the alto has a way of making some sense out of the bass. But it's only when you put the bass, the tenor, the alto, and the soprano, as we say in church world, the lead. Okay, when you got the lead going, then you got a happy soul. Okay, you didn't get it. Peace means you got to have all pieces working together. You have to have the good and the bad. You have to have the sunshine and the rain. You got to have those who like you and those who don't like you. You got to have your enemies in your presence because the word says that's where God's going to put a banquet table for you and it will overflow. It's going to overflow. You got to have some harmony. Peace is all about Harmony. It is abiding in a relationship with Almighty God where there will be a deep abiding peace. But you see, you cannot have a weak spirit about you. You have to have a, a, a cooperative understanding of peace. You see, the Bible tells us that God's peace stands for everything that contributes to humans' highest and best good. We, we have peace peace when God accepts us uh, on the basis of our worthlessness. Okay, we have peace when we accept we are worthless before a powerful God. When we think it's all about us, you will never have peace. My friends, it comes when we allow God to do whatever God wants to do for us, through us, and to us. We have peace when we come to understand that whatever God does is for our very good. I don't want somebody to hear me this Sunday because, you see, if there is a life with no peace, you have to catch yourself because the devil has taken up residency in your spirit. When you have a life that you are always anxious and always uh, mad and always excited, you have to understand that that may not be the will of all mighty God. See, peace, my friends, it does not come from a doctor's prescription. Peace does not come, being you can't buy it at the CVS and the Walgreens. 
Peace don't come from smoking weed, drinking Hennessy in a car lot or department store. Peace, my Christian friends, is really dependent on your relationship with Almighty God. And this is what Advent is. It's always an invitation for you and I to become in relationship with an all-loving God. The Bible says you will be kept in perfect peace. Oh, what a promise. What a promise to be kept in perfect peace. God, God promises that, that we will have perfect peace, peace that will keep us in perfect peace. And in the Hebrew, the, the word is shalom, and, and, and perfect peace is actually shalom, shalom. What that means, Minister Donnie, is it shows us the Hebrew, the repetitious communication is showing intensity. It means that you will have not just peace, but perfect peace. Okay, when you hear it said twice, it's better than nice. Okay, when you hear, oh, Brother Sean, that was your shout out right there. Now, <laughs> so nice, had to name it twice. That's what they say. When, when you hear it said twice, that means it is better than. It is with repetition. It is with emphasis. It is shalom, shalom. It, okay, okay. Brother David, you remember when you were acting up as a child before you became a believing almighty God and your, your mama and your daddy said, Said, David and you didn't come when they said David David you read and you get you see when you get your name called twice you know you better show up God says I will give you perfect peace I'm gonna give it to you twice so you will hear it in your spirit and hear it in your heart to be kept in perfect peace it is a matter of the mind and don't forget what the scriptures tell us about being a matter of the mind Matthew says we are to love the Lord our God of all our heart soul spirit and our mind the Romans 12 tells us what be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind mind. It's a matter of the mind, y'all, for Corinthians 2 and Philippians 2, 5 tells us we, we can have find Christ and find peace of Christ in our mind. And of course, y'all, Colossians 3, 2 says it this way. It says, but to have the mind on the things set above. We have to have the mind of Christ, and when we have the mind of Christ, we have peace in our life. Y'all hear what I'm saying this second Sunday of Advent because the Christian life is not an unthinking thing. It's not uh, just a doing thing or an experiencing thing. It's about having the mind of Christ, having our peace given to us as we think on the right things. The Hebrew word of Pastor Lanson is shamak. Shamak, it simply means this. It means comes from the root word to prop and to has an idea to lean upon and to take hold of, the, to, to lean upon, to hold of, to bear, to establish, to, to, to have a sense of having the mind of Christ. You see, when you sustain the mind of God. God will give you God's peace. When your mind is stayed on God, then your actions will follow. And somebody needs to hear this word of conviction today because I want you to recognize that God is giving you an invitation to have the right mind. God is giving you a sense of being to have the right mind. What is the mind of Christ? To have the mind of Christ, you have perfect peace. It has to be stayed on him. To keep this in perfect peace, our minds must be stayed on the Lord. If our mind is stayed on ourselves, or our mind is stayed on our problems, or our mind is stayed on the problem people, my friends, you'll never have perfect peace. Hear what I'm saying. If your mind is focused on the problem and not the problem solver, if it's focused on the thing and not the one who created all things, you will never have perfect peace. You, you have to have your mind right. And I want somebody watching today to have a checkup from the neck up and have a mind evaluation, have a mind purging and start thinking about things that don't really mean a lot, but focus on the things that are really important. You are in worship right now, but you have to have your mind in worship, not just checking off a box to what you did on Sunday morning. Come here, OJs. Your body is here 
with me, but your mind, come on, y'all know the song, is on the other side of town. You're, you're messing me around. Oh, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. Oh. He may be giving you thrills, but I'm paying the bills. Your mind needs to be here with me, God is saying, right here, right there, because when your mind is with me, you are in perfect peace. Let me see if I can close because I don't want you to miss the significance because the Bible tells us where your mind is, your heart is. When you trust in God, God will keep your mind stayed on him. Is that not what Proverbs 3 and 5 says? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thy own understanding. Acknowledge him in all thy ways and he shall direct your path. Is that not what the Bible is telling us to lean on almighty God? Lean on the everlasting arms. Lean in the presence of the one who made us. Lean on the one who's able to keep us. Lean on the one. Come on, lean with the rock with it, baby. You've got to lean on the word of Almighty God because it is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. The battle is not yours, it's the Lord's when you lean on the Lord. The battle that we face right now, friends, is not about what we do, it's about what God is able to do inside of us. The battle that we face right now, y'all, is not what I want, it's what God's will must be done. The battles that we face, my friends, of overcoming is not what I'm going to do. It's what God says God has done through God's holy word. Isaiah 26 says, because of this promise, we are encouraged to trust God and live in perfect peace. Perfect peace, perfect peace. Don't know if I can give it to you any other way except this, y'all, but on December the 7th, 1941, you've got to understand tomorrow is Pearl Harbor Day, but it happened on a Sunday morning in Honolulu, Hawaii, where Japanese planes came and attacked, y'all, a U.S. port, a U.S. harbor of military naval base. It was at that place, y'all, on the second Sunday in Advent in 1941, that we experienced not peace, but war. Okay, we experienced war, y'all, in 1941. And while that war was going on, y'all, there were people whose skin had been kissed by nature, sun like mine and like many of yours, who were working and in, in operating in a segregated uh, U.S. military force, Navy, Air, Army, uh, Marines, uh, Air Force, segregated, fighting for freedom, but did not have the liberties to uh, exercise those freedoms on the ships, on the battlefields, even in the barracks where they were fighting for freedom. And I've got to give a shout out, y'all, on this day before Pearl Harbor Day to Doris Dory Miller. Doris Dory Miller, y'all, born a son of sharecroppers out of Texas, y'all, was big for his age, they says, and big for his size, so much so that he got into fights. He wasn't fighting because he was big. He was fighting against racism and sexism, fighting, y'all, in the 1930s, y'all, against people who would look down on him because of the color of his skin. Now, you have to use what God gives you because he took that fighting ability to the U.S. Navy, y'all, and was a prize fighter on the USS ship. Okay, he was a prize fighter, y'all, on the USS West Virginia because of his ability. But because he worked in a segregated Navy, y'all, he never got above the rank of steward. He never got above the rank of a waiter. He would shine the officer's shoes, give them wake-up calls. Dory Miller, y'all, a prize fighter, but because of the color of his skin, working in a segregated Navy, y'all, never got a chance to rise up. He had a gift, but that gift was not really used until on December the 7th, 1941, when this maid, this, this, this mate, this kitchen help, this shoe shine man, y'all, got behind the guns on this naval ship, y'all, and began to fire into the air on the enemy's planes attacking on Pearl Harbor Day. You missing it, y'all. This man who was from Texas, the son of a sharecropper, who because of the color of his skin could not stand up 
and fight the way he wanted to, but on the day of attack, God used this man that the world says you can't do it. God used this man without ability of training, of fighting, and shooting a gun, but God used this man, y'all, to bring peace to the world. Now, don't get it twisted, because what I'm really saying is not that the gun was the thing that brought peace. It was being in a position and being obedient to Almighty God that God used him in such a way. When you understand what God is able to do in your life, you may be in the middle of a fight, in the middle of a battle, in the middle of a war, but when you say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee, no other help I know, if thy would draw thyself from me, where shall I go? In the midst, y'all, of a fight, Dory Miller, y'all, was a, awarded a hero medal, a hero medal for bringing down enemy planes. This man, y'all, who was not trained, he used what God gave him, his God-given abilities to bring peace to that situation. Don't know who I'm talking to, but I want you to recognize that God has a way of always taking you below the surface of the fight to what we call the cushion of the sea. Okay, they didn't get it. Dr. Monroe, let me help you explain this to them. The cushion of the sea is really that place where God takes you that only God knows you need to be. And while the storms of life are raging above you, recognize God has a way of protecting you and giving you perfect peace. Where did you get that illustration from, Reverend? Well, it comes simply by the nature of submarines. Submarines are made, y'all, to go to the depths of the sea. When they're going to the depths of the sea, it doesn't matter what's going on above them. They are there at the depths of the sea because they are on a mission. But while they are in a mission, they have what they call the cushion of the sea. The submarine is made, y'all, to withstand turbulence in the water. The submarine is made, y'all, to even, even repel against torpedoes. The submarine is made y'all to go to a place that only it can go and while it's there it's restored it's renewed and it's kept safe somebody looking at me right now because I believe God has given you a sense of peace in the cushion of God's heavenly seed in the cushion of God's being in the cushion of God's presence when peace like a river attendeth my ways understand that God is saying I'm bringing something to you in such a powerful way that you now have an invitation. We want you to know that you are a blessing to us. Thank you for joining and being a part of this worship service today. To God be the glory. Great things God has done. Y'all have a wonderful day and a wonderful week. We look forward to worshiping with you next week. Have a blessed day.